Church. My name is Tim. I'm the student worker at Jera Street Baptist Church. Last week we heard from uh, five final year students who've been with us for some years at Jera Street who are moving on to different things. And this week we're going to hear from four more. Okay, I have with me here Joel and Karen and Becca and Iona. And we're just going to talk a little bit about their experiences of being students at Jera Street and also what they're up to next. Um, so maybe I could ask you all first, uh, what, what's been a particular highlight of, of studying at Jera Street? Maybe we'll start with Joel. Yeah. So yeah, hey there, guys. I'm Joel. Um, so I've been a student at Jarrett Street for, for four years now. Um, and I suppose a highlight for me, I guess, is just uh, being able to see the growth in my life, um, just as uh, in terms of the person becoming and um, the spiritual growth as well. And then it's been really nice at Jarrett Street because um, I think there's been a bunch of us who've kind of you know, gone through stages of university together. There's a good student group at Jarrett Street. And it's been nice getting to see um, the growth and spiritually and in other ways in, in everyone else's life around me as well and be a part of that, that journey with them. Great. Yeah. And how about you, Karen? Um, hi, I'm Karen. Um, I've been studying music at Aberdeen University. Um, I think as life as a student at George Street, I've really enjoyed the George Street at 6.30 nights and Sunday evenings, um, particularly being involved in the worship band and leading the band there. Um, it's just been, it's been really, really great um, getting to know other band members and, you know, connecting with students of all ages um, and encouraging people through that um, and being encouraged by that. So that's definitely been a highlight for me. And how about you, Becca? Hi, I'm Becca. Um, I think a real highlight for me has to be the student launches because like Joe was saying, you see everyone, uh, the student community has like grown and come together over the four years and that was such a useful way to welcome new folks and get to spend time with folks that you knew through students at Jarrett Street. So that would be a highlight for me. And you can find out to good food. Exactly. Food and is always super fantastic. Hi, I'm Iona. I've been doing English and theology. Um, <clears throat> and a highlight for me, well, Becca's kind of stolen mine. I was going to say student lunches too. Um, but yeah, so student lunches. And I guess the, the thing that I loved most about that was, like Becca said, the community. And um, so part of that would have been Jared Street 630 and things like the student weekends away as well. I've, yeah, really enjoyed growing, like making those, yeah connections with people and really growing in relationships with people. Thank you all for sharing that. Uh, maybe I can all ask you as well uh, what you're up to next. It'd be great to hear that and how we can be praying for you, especially. We start with Joel again. Yeah, so I'm not entirely sure what's next for me. Um, I'm currently looking for jobs and like accounting and finance sort of stuff. Um, ideally, and it'd be great also if you could pray for it, I'd, I'd find something up here in Aberdeen. Um, there's not a huge amount going at the moment, but um, I, I love it here and I, I love being at Charge Street and it would be awesome if uh, you know, I can continue, continue here. Sure, we will do. And how about you, Karen? Um, so I have been accepted to do the Masters um, in Music at Aberdeen Uni, so I'm sticking around. <laughs> um, so I'm planning on moving out as well, um, so that's quite a big transition. Um, so prayer for that would be good. Also prayer for the preparation for this Masters. Um, it was quite intense um, but I'm kind of up for the challenge so um, knowing that my church family will be behind me is it's a real blessing so sure and, and how about you Becca um I'm going to be doing the relay program um, so I'll be working with the Christian Union in St Andrews and um, basically supporting them sharing Jesus on their campus in any way that I can um, and at the minute I'm really trying to find financial support and prayer support for next year. And um, so pray that I would find the support to be able to complete next year it would be really great. I'll, I'll add there that if you would like to get in touch with me to support Becca, then we can make that happen. How about you, Iona? So I am going to be doing a master's as well, a master's in theology at Aberdeen. Um, and yeah, my biggest uh, prep one at the moment would be um, that I'm looking for a flat um yeah which is quite tricky at the moment because as of today the housing market is not opened yet so can't do viewings or anything like that um yeah so finding a flat and moving um that is my biggest concern at the moment 
Okay, well, let's, uh, let's join together in, in praying for these guys just now, will we? Father, uh, we want to thank you so much for all the different ways that, that these guys have been involved in the, in the life of Jerry Street. Thank you for the ways they've served uh, in our children's ministries, in worship, in our youth ministries, in, uh, in tech, in a whole host of different ways um, and at different times, and, and relationally as well. Thank you for the part of our community that they've been and we just we just give you praise for them we thank you for the ways that you've been working in their lives and whatever is next for them whether they're staying around whether they're moving on we ask that you would you would bless them you would make their ministry and their work fruitful thank you that by your spirit you go with them and you are ahead of them and and father we're particularly aware that that these times are difficult they are um complicated particularly when, when start, trying to start out in a career or um, in this particular stage of life. We just ask that you would, you would be in all the practicalities you would provide financially and uh, in housing and in jobs wherever needed. Father, please would you um, provide what, what these guys need. And we just pray that you would be keeping speaking to them, keep growing them. And thank you so much for the work that you're going to continue to do in them. And we thank you for them in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, guys. God bless you. Well, please do join with me in keeping all of our final years in your prayers, especially at the minute. Uh, it's been a funny old time for them not really being able to say goodbye to their uni friends in the normal way. Um, and so we do wish them all the best. And we do thank all of you who've been part of our family over the last few years. Thank you for all the ways you've been involved. Thank you for all the ways you've served. Thank you just for being part of the community as yourselves and sharing your lives with us. God bless you and uh, whatever is next for you. Well, good morning, everyone, and a uh, really warm welcome to you uh, as we come uh, together uh, to worship God uh, and to experience his presence uh, with us today. Uh, whether you're joining us live on Sunday morning or whether uh, you're joining us uh, later on, uh, welcome, and we hope and trust that you will experience something of our amazing, faithful God. And so let's just begin with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Lord, you are the faithful God. You've promised us, you've, you've made clear through your word and how you've dealt with your people over the generations that you are a God who can be completely trusted. Lord, you are the, the awesome creator of all things. You are the one who has said, I will sustain all things, and so you do. You are the one who has said that you will redeem us and, and will bring us home to you. And we, we thank you that we can trust you because you are a faithful God. Thank you that we know and we can be confident that we truly are forgiven because you are faithful. And you have promised us uh, through the work of Jesus on the cross that our sins have been dealt with that we are no longer in our sin, but we are released, we are free, we are declared not guilty. And we, we just bless you and we thank you for that. We thank you, Lord, that we can be confident that we have been reconciled to you, that we've been brought together again as friends of God, because you are the faithful one. We thank you, Lord, that we can be confident uh, that we will be looked after, that your hand is looking after us, that you're, you're looking out for us. Uh, you've promised us peace. You've promised us joy. You've promised to pour the love of God into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Thank you. We can depend on these things because, not because we're able to whip them up within us, but because you're a faithful God and you keep your promises. And, and so, Lord God, we thank you so much. Most of all, Father, we thank you for the amazing promise of heaven, the amazing promise of, 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 of eternal life beginning here and now, but finally coming to its consummation in glory on that final day. Thank you that we don't need to be afraid of death because we have a God who we can completely depend on and rely on, the faithful one. And Lord God, we just want to pray that as we gather today and as we look at your word and as we sing your praises, Lord God, would you thrill us once again with the reality and the truth that you are faithful and we can build our life confident 
that you will never change. You're solid. You're dependable. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What a faithful God have I. What a faithful God. We worship you, Lord. Come and fill us with your Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we come uh, today and we come, we're going to be worshipping this faithful God of ours. Karen is going to be leading us in worship. We're going to hear uh, some of the staff team reading Psalm 100. And we're going to be looking uh, in the book of Acts at the, set, at the third of our series in the book of Acts. And we're looking uh, today at the whole question of guidance. Uh, how can we know God's direction for our lives? So that's what we've got pl- uh, lined up for this morning. So without any further ado, I'm going to hand over now uh, to Karen, who's going to lead us in our praise. Good morning, church. Let's join together and worship the Lord.
noise to the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Well, thank you, Karen. Thank you to the staff team for uh, leading us in our worship and for reading uh, that amazing psalm to us. We have a God who deserves our praise, don't we? So we're going to, uh, we're going to be continuing our series in the book of Acts today. And we come uh, today to chapter 1 and verses 12 to the end of the chapter. And as I said earlier in, in, at the, in the introduction, we, we, we're really focusing here on the whole question of guidance. And the situation that, that we read here, we, we, we find a, a situation where, where the, the 12 disciples are no longer 12. There are 11. And so the question arises, well, what are they going to do? Um, and how are they going to do it? Are they going to replace Judas? Uh, or are they going to just go on as 11? If they are going to replace Judas, then um, who is going to replace him? Uh, and so we're going to look at this passage and we're going to be asking the question as we look at it, is, is, I guess, is how can we learn from the disciples uh, regarding guidance? And we're going to find four keys to guidance that I believe are right here in this passage and hopefully will help us as we seek to discern God's will for our life. Because yeah, I believe with all my heart that if we are going to be faithful, genuine Christians, walking the Christian walk, then one of the first questions on our lips constantly needs to be, what do you want me to do, Lord? Where do you want me to go? How do you want me to live my life? And, and, and that needs to be right through our life in, in every decision that we make. So let's read the passage, and then we're going to try and find these four keys for guidance uh, in our lives. It says, then they returned to Jerusalem. This is after Jesus has ascended into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jer Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. And when they had entered Jerusalem, they went up to the upper room, where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, and Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the zealot, and Judas the son of James. All these with one accord were devoting themselves to prayer, together with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the brothers, the company of persons was in all about 120 and said, brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. Now this man acquired a field with the reward of his wickedness, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and all his bowels gushed out. And it became known to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the field was called in their own language, Akeldama, that is, field of blood. And, 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 and Peter goes on, for, for it is written in the book of Psalms, may his camp become desolate, and let there be no one to dwell in it and let another take his office. So, one of the men who, had, who, have, who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these men must become with us a witness to his resurrection. And they put forward two, Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also called Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You, Lord, who, knows, who know the hearts of all, show which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this, this ministry and apostleship 
from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them. And the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven disciples. Well, the background to this passage really uh, couldn't be clearer. We have, on the one hand, the eleven, uh, the, 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 the remaining disciples. And we're told that after Jesus is, is ascended into glory, that they obediently return to Jerusalem, and that there they uh, meet with, with the, the, the wider group of, of believers, 120 people in all, they meet in, in this upper room, which may well be the place, the same upper room where, where the, 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 the Lord celebrated that final Passover meal and instituted the Lord's Supper. Um, and and, and they, they did that. But more, more importantly than where they met was what they did there. And it says that they were devoting themselves to prayer. They were devoting themselves to prayer. Here it's fascinating, isn't it? that here they are meeting after Jesus has gone up, and, and the one thing they're doing is they're praying. We know from the end of, of Luke's gospel that they, they didn't just pray all the time, but they actually went to the temple, and they, they praised God, and they blessed God there. But here in the upper room where they were alone, they prayed. Praise and prayer. And, and these are, uh, the, I guess, along with reading the Bible, the essential elements in Christian devotion, aren't they? And here's a, you know, a really fascinating thing here is that Jesus has promised them, look, I'm going to, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. You're going, you're, I'm, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. And what do they do? They devote themselves to prayer. You see, sometimes when we, when we think about the promises of God, we think they're almost just things that we can take for granted. Sometimes the, the, the promises of God, we think, well, yeah, well, it's just kind of automatic, isn't it? And yet here what we find is that, that the, 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 the apostles, when they're given this promise from Jesus, what do they do? They, 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 they devote themselves. I, th I think they were praying that, that that promise would come, that that promise would come to them. And you see, some, sometimes I think when, when we're given promises by God, when we read in God's word of his promises, we just kind of skim over them and, 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 and all the rest of it. And we think, well, why am I feeling joyous? God's promised me joy. Why am I feeling peaceful instead of anxious? God promised me peace. Why am I feeling more loving towards my neighbor? God promised he'd pour his love into my heart. Well, listen, the problem isn't God's faithfulness, is it? The problem is that we sometimes, we need to take hold of those promises. And the way we take hold of those promises is through prayer. We go to God and we say, Lord, you've promised me joy. Lord, I, I, I want to receive your joy. I genuinely want to receive your joy. Would you please fill me up with your joy? A joy that doesn't depend on the happenings of my life, but a joy that is in you. I want peace, Lord. This world's gone crazy. I, I want to know your peace. Would you, would you please just pour your peace into my heart? Lord, I, I, I want to love my neighbor, and yet I'm finding it really hard. Please, pour your love into my heart. They devoted themselves to prayer. God said, Jesus said, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. What did they do? They prayed, please, Lord, send the Holy Spirit. And that's how you deal with God's promises. You don't just read them in the Bible and then get on with life. You, you claim them. You, you're, you're like Jacob. You, you, you wrestle with God until he blesses you. And, 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 and it's the same with the promises of God. We, 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 we don't get up from the place of prayer until we've experienced that blessing. And uh, that's the 11. Or the 119 or 120, if you will. But what about Judas? Well, we read, didn't we, that he bought a field with the money that he made. And uh, we know that he, hung, he hanged himself. He got a rope and he hanged himself from a tree and then the tree must have split or the rope gave way and he fell down and his stomach whereas he fell he must have hit on a rock or something and his stomach was opened up and uh, you have this horrible thing of 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 his his 
his field was then, we know, was used as a, a place where people who uh, were visiting Jerusalem and who died, it was used as a cemetery for them. And, 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 and the really sad thing about Judas, of course, is what a wasted opportunity that was. Imagine, imagine being called by Jesus to be one of his disciples and then throwing it all away. You see, the, the other disciples, they weren't perfect. When Jesus got arrested, they, they ran away. And, and yet the difference was they came back, didn't they? But, but Judas, he did more than run away. He, he actively betrayed the Lord Jesus. And he, 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 didn't, he never came back. He never came back. It's such a wasted opportunity. You see, the problem with Judas, and we, 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 we know this, was that, was that he never quite got, he never quite grasped the infinite worth of the Lord Jesus. Remember when Mary went to, to pour the, the, the bottle of nard over Jesus and, and, and Judas says, whoa, don't do that. Because he knew that bottle. This wasn't like going down to the perfume shop to buy a 50 pound bottle of perfume. The, the, this, was, this was tens of thousands of pounds. This was a year's salary. And, 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 and he's, he's like, no. But the problem was that he didn't understand Jesus was, the, the infinite value of Jesus meant that it was totally appropriate to bless Jesus in that kind of a way. The other thing is that that incident shows us that, that he, for, for, for Judas, the, the physical was more important than the spiritual. And yet for the believer, while we don't, we don't of course, we don't, we, we, the, the physical is important. We're not dualists who think one's against the other, but we understand the importance of the spiritual, don't we? We understand that it's important that we are forgiven, that it's important that we are redeemed, that it is important that God is filling us with peace and joy and love. It's important that we're filled with the Holy Spirit. That, that the, the spiritual is important. And, and Judas didn't seem to get that. For him, the physical was all that mattered. And, and, and so don't waste your life. Recognize the infinite worth of Jesus and the importance of the spiritual in your life that you develop and grow in your spiritual walk with Jesus, the infinitely valuable one. And so we come to, that's the background, and so we come to this, this selection of Matthias uh, as, as to, to replace Judas and to make up the 12. And I always want to, you know, look at the process with me that they went through in order to make this appointment. And the first thing that I want you to see is, and, and this is the first key to guidance, and, and it is the primacy of Scripture. It says in verse 15 that Peter stood up among the brothers and said, brothers, the Scripture had to be fulfilled which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. And then he quotes in verse 20, two of David's sons. May his camp become desolate and let there be no one to dwell in it. And let another take his office. Look at what Peter says about Scripture. Peter believed without a shadow of a doubt that Scripture was the Word of God. He says, let the Scripture, the Scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas. We, we, we talked about this a few weeks back, didn't we? That the Bible is, is it, 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 it's written by men in line with their own personality, in line with their own way of putting things and all the rest of it. And yet, look at what he says. He says it was the Holy Spirit who spoke by the mouth of David. And so even though David was writing the psalm, the Holy Spirit was speaking through him. 
And, and, and of course, that is what we understand. There's two mistakes that people can make when they think about the Bible. One mistake is to say, well, it's just the words of men. Well, it is the words of men. Another mistake people can make is that the Holy Spirit kind of took over and possessed these people and, and, and wrote in a, as, as if it was, they, they weren't themselves. No. In, in some way, God, you, through the personalities of, of men, through the words of men, writes his word. And so we have our Bible, God's word, and yet written down in, 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 in ways that the men who wrote it would normally write. And then he, 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 he talks about these two Psalms, but here's the one, he says, let another take his office. And so Peter has gone back to the book of Psalms and he's found in there something relevant, something that is appropriate to the, the, the situation that they find themselves. He, 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 he sees that, that this, is being speak, this is speaking about Judas and, and the, therefore he needs to be uh, replaced. The primacy of Scripture. One of the first things I do when someone comes to me and says to me, Matthew, I don't know what to do about X or Y or Z. One of the first things I'll do often is say, have you, have you, what do you think the Bible says? And, and sometimes this, the Bible's really clear. Sometimes people come to me and they say, well, Matthew, I, 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 I'm desperate for guidance from God. And I say to them, well, what do you think the Bible says? And I say, well, the Bible says hey, that. And I say, well, there's your answer. And sometimes people at that point think, oh, okay, that makes sense. But other times, the reason that they've come to see me is that they've, they, they, they know fine what the Bible says, but they don't want to do it. And they come to me and they're actually looking for me to explain Scripture away so they can do the thing they really want to do, which is contrary to Scripture. And sometimes it's, it's hard because you, 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 you get into difficult conversations where you have to really uh, stand up for, for, for the Word of God and say, no, um, I understand why you want to do X or you don't want to do Y. But you know fine what the Bible says. And I'm going to pray that God will help you to be obedient to Scripture. And so that's the first key, is, is, is the primacy of Scripture. The second key is the importance of of common sense. Look at verses 21, 22, and 23. Um, P Peter speaks and he says, so, 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 so one of the men who had accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these men must become with us a witness to his resurrection. And they put forward to Joseph and Matthias. Here, what happens is that Peter applies some common sense to the scriptural truth that he's found. Another has to take his place, his office. And he says, okay, what, what would we expect? We, we, know, we know that the 11 of us, we were all chosen by Jesus. We were with him throughout his ministry. And we all witnessed the resurrection. What are, we going to, what are we going to look for? Well, it makes sense that we look for something similar. We're looking for a, we're looking for a man. We're looking for a man who was with Jesus throughout most of his ministry. And we're looking for someone who witnessed the resurrection. Those are the three things that we're looking for. We're looking for a man. We're looking for someone who was with Jesus throughout his ministry, or most of it. And we're looking for someone who witnessed the resurrection. And, and, and those, those three things then rules out a whole host of the 120 until they are able to narrow it down to two men, Matthias and uh, the other guy, Joseph, called Bersabbas. And common sense is a really important element in seeking God's will for our lives. But listen, common sense does not mean faithlessness. Sometimes, sometimes you, you'll, you'll hear somebody, uh, you know, and, 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 and somebody wants to go for something. 
um, and, 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 and someone else will say, oh, wait a minute, we can't do that because of this, 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 and this. And that kind of sometimes is that, well, that's common sense, not a bit of it. The kind of common sense we're talking about here is faith-filled. It is scripture-soaked common sense. And it's saying, here's what the Bible says, and here's how we're going to apply it today in the situation in which we find ourselves. And that kind of common sense, that kind of reasoning of saying, okay, how are we going to apply Scripture today? That is something that honors God and is vitally important in our seeking guidance common sense, the importance of common sense, the primacy of Scripture. And the third key, and we find this in verses 24 and 25, is the application of prayer. The application of prayer. They prayed, verse 24, and said, you, Lord, you know the hearts of all. Show which one of those these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. There's a couple of things here that just jump out, aren't there? One of them is that, that, that Peter says, you, you know the hearts of all. It, it takes us back, it reminds us, doesn't it, of, of that time when, when God said to Samuel, I want you to choose, this is thousand years earlier I want you to choose the next uh, the next king and and I want or rather I want you to appoint I want you to anoint the next king uh, and go to the house of Jesse and so he goes to the house of Jesse and they bring out the eldest and this is a eldest is a big guy and he's he just looks he looks like a king you know, he's got everything he's big and he's strong and he's brave and he's got everything going for him and so everyone thinks, oh, well, it must be the eldest. And, and, and Jesse says, sorry, and, and Samuel, Samuel looks at this guy and thinks, well, yeah, looks, everything looks great. And the Lord says, no. And then it says this, it says, the Lord doesn't look on merely the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. And here we have something very similar going on. When they pray, they say, Lord, you know the hearts of all. So show us which of these two you have chosen. You have chosen. We, we, we don't know these, people, these guys' hearts. We, we know they've been with us for a while, and we, we know they've been with Jesus. We know they saw the resurrection. But, but we, we don't know their hearts. So would you show us, Lord? Would, would you show us who you have chosen? We, we know that we were chosen by Jesus, but Jesus has gone to be with the Father. Jesus isn't with us anymore. So, and so they pray. They say, would you show us who you have chosen? We want the, the 12 to be chosen by you just as much as we were. You see, here's the thing. They come to, they come to God in prayer because they know that without God's help, they, they, they can't make the decision wisely. They don't know the hearts and they don't know Jesus' will. And you know, we, we, I believe with all my heart that when we seek guidance with humility, it will always drive us to our knees in prayer because we'll come to a point where we say, do you know what? I cannot guide myself. Can you, do you think you can guide yourself? Think about it. Do you make decisions all the time without talking to God about them? If you think you can guide yourself, then you'll never go to God for, in prayer for guidance. But if you're humble, and if you come to God in prayer with, with genuine and true humility, then God will lead you and God will guide you. And this is totally key the assurance that we can have through prayer. And so we have the primacy of Scripture. We have the importance of common sense. We have the assurance of prayer. And finally, in verse 26, the casting of lots. Yep, they cast lots for them. 
and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. So after prayer, they've done all the prayer, they've read the Bible, they've applied common sense, but a decision now has to be made. Well, how are we going to make it? I know, we don't want to let our prejudices come out, so let's just cast lots. I was telling um, I was telling my family that what I was preaching on and, uh, and the casting of lots and they were having a chat about it in the kitchen afterwards and uh, I can't remember who it was but one of them said something along the lines of incredible that they used gambling to decide who was going to be the 12th disciple and I thought to myself isn't that fascinating the casting of lots was the normal Hebrew way of seeking God's will in this kind of a situation and of course, it wasn't haphazard and random and gambling because they had what? They had, they had this whole decision in prayer. And yet, the question remains, should we cast lots today? And here's the interesting thing. The interesting thing is that after Pentecost, which we'll be talking about um, God willing, um, next week, after the Holy Spirit comes, there is no mention of the casting of lots anymore. The Holy Spirit coming changes everything. And, and Paul gives teaching to us about, about how to appoint elders and what to look for in elders and what to look for in deacons and all the rest of it. And we, 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 we're told that, and yet nowhere does he say, oh yeah, and, and don't forget to cast the lots. No, not a bit of it. In fact, we've got a couple of examples right here in the book of Acts. In Acts chapter 6, they, they decide that they're going to appoint some, uh, I guess, prototype deacons um, because the, 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 the 12 were being caught up with all this, uh, the, all this work, uh, this admin work, and they weren't, a, they weren't able to preach as much. They weren't able to pray as much uh, as, as, as they were. And so therefore, in verse 3 of, of Acts 6, it says, Therefore, brothers, pick out from among yourself seven men of good repute, full of the Spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. And what they said pleased the whole gathering, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmius, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. And therefore they set these before the apostles and they prayed and laid their hands on them. Here it seems to be a kind of congregational decision making. And they come together with these seven men and they bring them before the apostles and they lay hands on them uh, and they, they are then appointed. Another example is in Acts chapter 13. And uh, on this occasion, um, we, we, we read the prophets and the, the teachers are gathered together in Antioch. Um, and it says that verse 2, while they, while they were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said... Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. And then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. It seems to be there was a prophetic word that was spoken in this situation. Where God spoke, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul, and uh, I will bless them. And so in the, the, the era of the Spirit, it seems to be that the casting of lots has been replaced by the guidance of the Holy Spirit, sometimes speaking directly as in Acts 13, and sometimes speaking through the congregation as in Acts chapter 6. And, uh, and yet the casting of lots reminds us, doesn't it, of the importance of the Holy Spirit in guidance. The Puritans used to talk of the voice of the Spirit as, as the inner monitor. And I don't know if you've ever had an experience just when you've been alone with God. Maybe you've been reading your Bible and praying, and there's just been a moment where there's been real clarity about, about a decision or a direction 
or, or, or something else going on in your life. And, and it's just the Holy Spirit, that inner monitor in your heart that just is, is, is speaks to you with, with such precision and such clarity. And those moments are precious and, and often can lead us and guide us in ways in line with God's Spirit. But you'll never experience the inner monitor of God. You'll never hear God if you don't spend time with him, if you're not quiet before him, if you're not reading your Bible and praying and seeking his face. Um, when, when will he have that opportunity to speak to you? The Holy Spirit so often speaks to us in that quiet moment, on our own before God, on our knees. And so four keys to guidance. I just want to encourage you as you walk through life, seek God's will always. Let God's word be primary. If this book, God's word, says no, don't do it. If it says yes, go for it. The importance of common sense, not, 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 not faithlessness wrapped up as common sense, but actually applying the Bible in this generation in sound and wise ways. The assurance of prayer, humbling ourselves and saying we can't guide ourselves, but God will guide us. And the casting of lots, or in our, in our season, the inner monitor of the Holy Spirit speaking to us and leading us and guiding us in this generation. Brothers and sisters, we have a God who has a plan for our lives. God has a plan for your life, and it is the very best plan that you could ever have for your life. Let me encourage you to seek him. Lord, what do you want me to do? Let that be your question and let God lead you and guide you throughout your life. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you are a God who guides. Guide me, O oh, thou great Jehovah. I am a pilgrim walking through a barren land. But I thank you that I have a God who has a purpose and a plan for me. And I pray, Lord God, that you'd help me to, to seek to be guided by you in every way. And I want to pray for any listening to this and you're not a believer yet. And I want to encourage you too, to, uh, to come to God. Understand, don't be like Judas, who thought that all that mattered was the physical. Come to the God, to God alone, who can forgive you and give you new life so that the spiritual becomes vital and alive for you, as well as the physical in your life. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I'm going to hand over now to Karen, who's going to lead us in our closing praise.
Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you've enjoyed the service. Thanks, Karen, for leading us in our worship. And um, thanks to the staff team for reading God's word to us. Uh, and uh, yeah, bl the Lord bless you this week uh, as, you, uh, as you continue to, to, to live your life. And as the world begins to change again, as we begin to gradually emerge from lockdown, uh, may this be a time of blessing for us all. One of the things that uh, has been interesting over these last few uh, months is that many churches have, have, have testified that, that they've run Alpha courses online, they've run Christianity Explores, Explored courses online, um, and they've seen really good take up from those, maybe from people who would, wouldn't necessarily come to a building. And so we're going, to, we're going to run a Christianity Explored course. Graham, uh, is going to be, uh, Graham Moore is going to be leading that, uh, starting on the 21st of July. Um, so I want you to think, is there somebody you could invite along to that? There'll be details in Jared Street News and maybe more details next week as well. But it, begin to think, is there someone I could invite along to an online Christianity Explored course starting on the 21st of July? We also have the Fly Jesus Holiday Club coming up as well. And again, if you're interested in getting involved in that and helping out in that, um, then email tim at gerardstreet.com uh, and I know that he would be, he, he would love to hear from you. Um, and you can go to gerardstreet.com slash flyjesus uh, and all, all the details are there if you want to sign your kids up or, or whatever for that. So that's it, that's Fly Jesus. As always, you can give online if you, if you normally give uh, through the, the offering basket, you can give online, details are underneath this video. And we have tea and coffee uh, straight after uh, this finishes. If you're watching us live, um, grab a cup of tea or coffee uh, and join together uh, with the Zoom uh, chat. Let me just close in prayer uh, and then we'll be finished. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your presence with us. Thank you that you're a God who has a plan for us. Uh, and thank you that that is a lovely plan. Thank you that your, your, your plan for us is to bless us, not to harm us. And we thank you that we can depend on our faithful God to lead us in good and pleasing ways. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you so much for joining with us. Have a great week and God bless you all.